five reasons why dating is broken in 2024. Number one, dating divide. Culture plays a massive role in each of our individual view of the world. It also plays a huge role in our view of other people. Our culture from music, social media, and movies have divided men and women against each other where we only see the worst qualities in each other. This problem has made it worse by algorithms like your TikTok, like your Instagram, like your Facebook, for those of you who are older, not that old, but older, serving you content on your phone that is most triggering to you because you will spend the most time watching it. Suddenly, every video you see is of someone getting caught cheating or someone doing some sort of extremely disrespectful action towards their romantic partner. The thing about it is these algorithms don't understand the difference between what you enjoy and love and what you hate. Hate will actually get you to watch the whole thing three, four times. We'll get you to send it to your friends. We'll get you to comment on it, an angry comment. Oh my God, this makes me so mad. Oh my God, this is the stupidest thing ever. And so the more you're interacting with something, the more you see it because these algorithms are trying to serve you more of whatever you spend the most time and energy on. And the thing that zaps your energy is usually the negativity. And so as it relates to your dating life, but think about how much dating and relationship content you see focused in a positive sense. Think about how much you t of the relationship content you consume, how much of that is, oh my God, relationships are good for this and, and positivity this and love is great and all that's great. And how much of it is I got cheated on. Let me tell you a story about my narcissistic ex. Let me tell you a story about how I walked in on this guy and he was, you know, uh, having sex with our maid. Let me tell you about a story. You know what I mean? And it's like that becomes your view of the world after a while. And the thing is, when that becomes your view of the world and the view that you take on the opposite sex, the one that you're actually trying to, you know, create children with and create humans with, that becomes a problem because now your belief system is skewed into a place where you're in belief of all men are trash or all women are trash all people are this and you begin to generalize based on the bias that is created by everything you're consuming for those of you who might be new you might might not be familiar with all the spirituality elements and terms and names and manifestation and the law of attraction but we talk about that quite a lot here at the players club okay it's not just about the physical it's not just about the what you can see it's also about a lot about so mostly about what you can feel and so i say that to say when your mindset is altered or changed or shifted or pushed in a particular direction that's going to drastically change what you receive physically. So I'll give you guys an example of dating divide. I hear all my friends say women are trash. Then when I go on TikTok, I see guys making videos about horror stories of finding out that the love of their life had been cheating on them for years. I then begin to believe wholeheartedly that all women are cheaters and liars, which makes it that much harder for me to build relationships with honest women. Now we both have a divide where nobody trusts the other person and everyone is being standoffish, being like, you make the first move. No, you make the first move. No, you make the first move. No, you make the first move. Nah, I'm not doing nothing. No, nah, I don't trust you. Nah, you're, you're a bad person. Nah, and everyone just stands at a stalemate looking at each other and we're waiting for the first person to draw their weapon. So if you're not careful, what you consume can create a bias around a particular belief or generalization of the opposite sex that leads to that exact experience all the time. Because you know, you can also manifest and attract the things that you don't want into your life. And actually that's what majority of us are doing is attracting the things into our lives that we don't want to see because we're speaking them into existence because our minds are always focused on them because that's all we talk about all the time. And we're literally affirming the bad parts, right? Of life and relationships that we don't want. And we're actually affirming those to bring those into our lives as crazy as it sounds. 
The, sa- the universe doesn't know the difference between good and bad. So the universe doesn't know the difference between attracting something that's good for you and attracting something that's bad for you. It just knows what you put your energy and attention and mind on. Number two, rejecting rejection. <laughs> Everyone is afraid of rejection and doesn't want to put themselves out there because of the fear of being laughed at. The fear stops people from trying new things, going to new places, talking to new people, because if we were to put ourselves out there in the dating world, we would have to face the fact that some people will reject us. But the fear is what is stopping any of us from discovering any deep and honest connections that we all aspire to have. Instead, we try to meet people the easiest way possible, like dating apps. But then we wonder why our relationships feel like they have no substance. Men and women, a lot of us, are in fear of rejection. We don't want to be turned down by the women. We don't want to have the woman laugh at us or tell us we're not cute enough or try to dance with one of the women and then her friend looks at us and then pulls her away because she sees how murked the guy is. We don't want to have to experience that rejection and humiliation. So the men who want it the easiest will hop right on the dating apps to have the easiest, most pain-free experience. But how that affects you is... The moment you start trying to get a man who is looking for the easiest, quickest experience and pain-free experience to chase you, you're going to be between a rock and a hard place because it's going to be very hard to get a man to chase you who is not motivated to chase anything at all, who's not motivated to go after anything at all, who had the intention when he logged in on the dating app to get the easiest, quickest most pain-free experience that he possibly could. And the same thing is happening vice versa, because a lot of you as well are also using the dating apps as a crutch to stop you from having to get up off of your couch, get out of your room, get out of your bed, and go outside and meet new people. I'm not saying you've got to run to the club or run to the bar. I'm just talking about going out and experiencing life and allowing life to happen to you so that you can actually put yourself in a position where you can meet the love of your life. I know that a lot of you love, uh, you know, Disney princess movies and love a good rom-com and love a good just romantic movie like The Notebook or like whatever. We all want to have our moment where we meet the love of our life and it's this amazing special moment that we share together and it feels so good. But the thing about it is, You're never going to experience that if you don't leave your house. I made the joke uh, with uh, with you guys yesterday about, you know, your the love of your life is not going to be a door dasher that knocks on your door and says, oh, I'm here to deliver your food. But actually, you're the most beautiful girl I've ever seen. Can I have your number and marry you? Like, that's not going to happen. So in reality, you're going to have to leave your house for any of these random situations to happen where you get the chance to meet the love of your life. You're going to have to go out, play, even if it's just going to a coffee shop and sitting there and doing work, even if it's just go like going out and doing anything, anything that you enjoy. And you don't even have to go there for the sole purpose of, oh, I'm going to go meet my partner. Just for the sole purpose of understanding that when you go and you do things and you take action and you leave your house, there's lots of things that can possibly happen. And I'm not talking about going to the club or going to a bar. For example, let's say I love painting and I really want to meet someone who is as passionate about painting as me. Rather than actually going to a paint class alone, this is what most of us would do, and striking a conversation with a stranger, I would rather stay home and scroll through a hinge and find someone I like or think is cool by their profile. But when I finally meet them, I wonder why they don't seem as passionate about painting as me. With more tools like social media and dating apps, majority of us are too lazy to leave our house and find love, like I said earlier. And even when we do leave our house, we go straight to the club or the bar, another low quality place. Because, right, this fear of rejection has all of us spending the most time in places that is the path of least resistance because we all want to live our lives comfortably none of us whether guy or girl want to be uncomfortable which is why we all go to the easiest places to experience love and relationships i.e the club i.e the bar i.e the dating apps those are the three that's the three-headed monster that we all go to when we're looking for a relationship. Can you imagine that? And the crazy part about it is that usually, not usually, 
for you at least the women that's where the lowest quality men are spending all of their time so imagine what your perspective on the world will be when all the time that you're spending is with all the low quality men and then you wonder why you feel like your entire world is only full of low quality men because you're literally where all where they all hang out don't go to the landfill and expect not to see garbage no diss to those guys number three this is where we're getting real juicy love lurking with our access to social media we can see the lives of the people we would have otherwise never seen or known of this also makes it possible for us to be in people's business more and also their relationships the problem is most people are only posting highlights of their relationship online so you watch that and compare it to the worst parts of your relationship and suddenly you are extremely unhappy with your partner or any new person you do meet the comparison we're making is to the highlight that they shared with us and we're comparing it to all the experiences and the ups and the downs that we have in our real life because our real life is not a movie our real life is not all highlights i can take 10 seconds or you know a couple minutes out of my day and make it look amazing meanwhile i was crying for the rest of the day but when you're seeing my life from just the 10 second highlight you might think oh my god you have such an amazing easy awesome life when you see that person in that amazing relationship for the 10 second video that they post the picture that literally snapshots snapshots just a single moment in time it's easy to surmise sorry i hate using words that make my speak unaccessible it's easy to believe that, oh, they have all these, uh, their, their relationship's so amazing and so much better. I wish I could have a relationship like that. That's why I call it love lurking. Once you start lurking and looking at other people's relationship, looking at other people's love life, right? It immediately makes you unhappy with anything you're experiencing in your own life. I like to use examples as a man because I'm a man. Shocker, right? I see how a guy on TikTok got surprised by his girlfriend with an extremely nice watch for his birthday. I begin to be upset that the girl I'm talking to doesn't do anything for me. A relationship I was once happy with, I now feel just ever so slightly unfulfilled in. So because I feel unfulfilled now in this talking stage with this girl that doesn't do anything for me, I start messaging girls and exploring my other options. Maybe I'll take a gander on these dating apps to see what else is out there. Sometimes it's hard to even notice it, how it affects you and how you feel about someone because you begin to develop opinions and ideas that aren't necessarily organic to you, where you see something and you go to yourself subconsciously and say, oh, if my relationship doesn't have that, then I must have a bad relationship. If my relationship doesn't look or feel exactly like that, it must mean I have a bad relationship. And so remember how we talked about mindset. We remember how we talked about your mindset plays a role in what you end up seeing physically. And so you begin to build a bias and an understanding of I don't have a good relationship because my relationship um, in my relationship, my boyfriend doesn't peel my oranges for you. It might be something different. I don't have a good relationship because I see this and everyone else in a good relationship has that. And so because I don't have that, even though I didn't have a problem with it before I had it, now that I know that I don't have it and other people have it, I'm unhappy. I'm unfulfilled. I'm unsatisfied. And so what do a lot of us do when we're talking to new people or we're dating people and we feel unsatisfied or unhappy? We begin shifting our eyes to looking for something more or better. When you are comparing your relationships to what you see online, it never feels like your real life is as interesting or exciting. But that comparison steals your joy and doesn't allow you to enjoy anybody that you begin seeing or dating. Okay, that goes for both people. Number four, you guys are going to love this one. Ho heaven straight up movies tv and social media and music have made it cool to be a hoe whether you're a guy or a girl it's encouraged us to sleep with 
whoever we want, whenever we want, however many times that we want to do so. This creates a lust problem where everyone is creating relationships centered around lust because of the encouragement to jump right into pineapples or sex. Now you have less fulfilling relationships because so much of the focus is on lust. We all want to believe that the music we listen to, whether it be rap, bar and b whatever it may be, that it, it's just music. It doesn't play any role in how I feel about anything. It doesn't represent how I feel about anything. But in reality, it's music is just like a chant, which is just like an affirmation. Because as you sing the song over and over and over and over again, you're actually affirming and speaking into your life whatever those lyrics are about. I know for some of you guys, it's a little bit too philosophical. It's a little bit too deep. It doesn't make any sense. But I'm here to tell you, if you're open to understanding and believing and 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 stepping into a deeper life with more depth and richness, I can assure you when you're repeating those lyrics over and over and over again, they become your mind state and your mind frame. They become your belief system. Those are your real affirmations. So for those of you who think you've never done any affirmations, trust me, you have. Because when you repeat the same songs over and over again and you're singing those lyrics at the top of your lungs, those are your affirmations. So whatever those songs are about, that is exactly what you're going to begin to see in your life. I promise you the same way that music can make you feel a particular way. It's doing something to you. It's transferring energy to you. Now, I'm not saying, oh, my God, you're going to have the worst life if you allow yourself to stand in a club and listen to Cardi B and make the stallion wop. But what I'm helping you understand or what I'm trying to help you understand is that feeds your mindset. And remember, your mindset is going to feed your reality, right? So you're probably wondering, okay, I, I, I still don't really get it. I don't understand. I'll give you an example. Let's say you hear Meg Thee Stallion talk about WAP in her music. You love that song, WAP. Got that way that was in a mop with that way that was in a mop. Right? You love that one. You subconsciously internalize that your own value is in between your legs. And that's your only value. You then begin attracting guys that are mostly interested in sex. Shocker. The same thing that you have internalized through what you've been consuming is exactly what you see in your life. But you don't realize the connection. So you're really confused why all guys only seem to want you for the same thing. Meanwhile, you've been affirming that exact thing in your everyday life. That's the same reason why people joke around and they say, oh, that um, singer or songwriter is in a good, healthy relationship. They're not going to make any good music anymore. And as soon as they break up with someone, they're like, oh, my God, finally, we can get the best album that we've ever gotten because there's a lot of trauma being released in most of the music that a lot of us are consuming, including myself. And so because of that, we're living in a whole heaven, as I like to call it, a whole heaven where everyone around us and a lot of the stuff we're consuming is encouraging us to be hoes. And like I said, it sounds great in theory that we all get to just do what we want, live how we want, sleep with whoever we want. But then we end up as individuals traumatized by the experience of living our lives through lust and not building any real connections with people. What you consume will affect your mind state and your focus. If you are constantly surrounding yourself with whole culture, whether you're a guy or girl, I'm talking about dating in general, your life begins to become all about lust and sex. Don't then be confused why all your relationships are about lust and sex. <laughs> Number five, decision delusion. Buzzwords like narcissist or toxic ex make us all feel like everyone is a walking red flag. So in turn, we are always trying to fight the idea of letting a toxic person control us. But we end up feeling like any amount of control or sacrifice for any relationship or partner is toxicity. This is going to get me mad. I won't lie. Our culture has made us believe that we should feel as free as possible in our relationship or else it's a bad 
relationship. I want to be free like a bird. I don't I don't want to have to answer to no one. I just want to do what I want whenever I want. I'll give you guys an example. I'm actually going to give you guys two examples because one I really want to bring up, but I want to come from the man's perspective first. Okay, let's say I'm in a relationship where a girl wants me to send her my location and make sure I'm back home by a certain time. I feel like that's too controlling and I should be able to go wherever I want, whenever I want, for however long that I feel like going. So I end up breaking up with that girl so that I don't have to answer to anyone at any time. Eventually, I realize that the freedom is actually loneliness. Now, I know some of you might be thinking, who the heck would do that? Who the heck would end a relationship simply because someone wants to know what time you're home at or someone wants to make sure that you're okay or safe or whatever? I'm telling you, as a man, I'm telling you, there are plenty of men who give up relationships because they don't want to be controlled. I'm telling you this, okay? This is really how it goes. Why do we have these concepts of hot girl summer or hot boy summer? Where does that come from? I know some of you guys might be a little bit unfamiliar, but like where do those ideas come from? People believe that, hey, I should be able to do what I want with who I want whenever I want. And the idea that you would try to control me or stop me from doing that means that you're trying to hold me back from my happiness. And you shouldn't try to hold me back from my happiness because if you're trying to hold me back from my happiness, then you're toxic. Let me give another example. And this example might rub some of you the wrong way, but that's okay. That's how we learn and we grow. Okay, let's say your boyfriend or the guy you're talking to right? You guys are going out somewhere. Let's say you're wearing an outfit that is a bit revealing. And he says to you, hey, I actually don't feel comfortable with you wearing that out because I know how guys think and I know what they're going to be thinking when they look at you in that outfit. I would, I want you to change. Now, that's why I said for some of you is going to rub you the wrong way. I know that for a lot of people, they'll say, well, you shouldn't control how I dress. I should be able to dress however I want to dress. I should be able to wear what I want to wear. And the fact that you're trying to control me or tell me what I should wear, you're toxic. I'm not here to say whether that's right or wrong or what the right way to go about it is or what you should do. What I am here to say is that concept and that idea stems from somewhere. Nothing is an accident. I always tell you guys, I always think about stuff way deeper than it is. It comes from the culture and the things that you consume on social media, in music, in movies, in TVs, all that good stuff, right? Because you begin to believe and internalize that your happiness is the ability to do whatever you want, however you want, even in your relationship. Now, I'm not saying that all of you guys would think that way exactly in the relationship and you'd be like, oh, F you, I'm not changing. But I just want you to understand how our culture has shifted all of us into a mind frame of thinking, if someone else wants me to do something in the relationship, that's because they're trying to control me. That's because they're a toxic person. That's because they're a narcissist. Remember, I told you guys all the time, I hate buzzwords because nobody knows what they mean. Because we're so uh, focused on trying to get rid of toxic people in our lives and not be in toxic relationships, we start thinking that our relationship should be about doing whatever we want to do and not, key point, not having to sacrifice anything for a relationship. And that is the biggest problem that we're all facing. Nobody wants to sacrifice anything for the relationship. And so the guys don't want to chase because that's too much work takes too much time, takes too much effort, takes too much consistency. Nobody wants to be patient with anything, wait for things to grow. Nobody wants to learn each other and understand each other and allow things to progress. Everyone wants the microwave right now, right now, right now, right now. Nobody has patience. And especially going through ups and downs of a relationship, nobody wants to problem solve. Nobody wants to compromise. Nobody wants to find solutions to problems and work through them, which is why our generation has been struggling. When you become obsessed with the idea that freedom is happiness, every aspect of a relationship 
feels restricting and suffocating. You hear others talk about how fun it is to be single, how fun it is to be a hot girl or a hot boy, and you assume that your happiness is being free and unrestricted. So we sabotage our relationships for freedom, and then we wonder why down the road we're lonely after we've pushed everyone away to do whatever it is we want whenever it is we want to do it. 